Hello and welcome to the Aero-V engine assembly video series. I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. In this series of video segments, we are going to walk through the assembly of an Aero-V engine. We will be following the sequence called out in the Aero-V assembly manual. The manuals get updated much more often than the video series. So if there is a case where the manual and the video series disagree, your manual that came with your engine is the guide for you to follow. But in general, all of the steps that we have in the manual will be shown in the video series. We hope you enjoy the video series. We hope you enjoy putting together your Aero-V engine. And we look forward to seeing your airplane flying. We're just about ready to set our crank into our case half here. So we're going to first install our center main bearing, which goes in this location here. Again, there's a dowel pin in the case, and there's a dowel pin hole in the bearing that we'll need to line up and make sure that that seats in there properly. And then once we get that lined up, press it down a little bit, and there, we'll take our plastic hammer and just give it a couple of couple of light taps, make sure that that's fully seated. Feels good, nice and flush. Now we're going to take our white lithium grease and we're going to lubricate both that bearing and the thrust bearing on the that will go on the crank, which I have in my other hand here. This bearing here is the thrust bearing for the engine. It goes on the flywheel end of the crank and you'll see it has uh, the flanges on it that uh, are your thrust bearing surfaces. We need to get some, some assembly lube in there. And again, you can, we use white lithium grease. You're welcome to use uh, your favorite engine assembly lubricant, but make sure that whatever you use, you get a, a good uh, coating of that in that bearing so that it's got some good lubrication on your initial turning of the crank. There we go, we got that. Now this bearing again has a dowel pin of dimple in it. You need to make sure that that's oriented back towards the flywheel so the bearing goes on in that fashion so that the dowel pin is back towards the flywheel end of the crank uh, rather than towards the uh, crank throw so it goes on in that fashion there. Now while we're looking at this bearing you can see that directly opposite the dowel pin uh, hole, I've actually made a little witness mark on the bearing itself. That is going to help me align the bearing when I set it in the, uh, in the uh, crankcase. And I've done that on all the bearings that are on the crank. I've done that on the uh, rear main thrust bearing. I've done it on the front main bearing. And I've also done it on our small front bearing that's up by the uh, uh, prop hub up here. So that'll help me to get those dowel pin uh, holes aligned so that I can set my crank into the uh, case. So our bearings are in place, our center bearing is lubricated, so we're ready to pick the crank up and set it in the case. I'm just going to grab it by a couple of connecting rods. It's kind of heavy, so we just drop it right in there. The connecting rods down into their appropriate holes. I'm going to look at my, look, find my witness mark in the back here so that I can get my dowel pin lined up in the back. Get that so it feels like it's going in. There we go. And we'll look for our dowel pin marking on these front bearings as well. There's that one. There's that one. Now as we move the crank around here, we should feel those start to drop in. Okay, that one feels like it's going in. That one just made a little noise like it's going in. This one we just got to find the Find the sweet spot. There we go. Now we'll take our plastic hammer, give it a couple of wraps. Make sure that seat's right down in there, which we're not quite there yet. Takes just a little bit of a little bit of adjustment to get everything to line up. There she goes. Got that one. That one feels good. That one feels good. It looks good there. There. Got our bearings in there. 
I'm going to rotate the crank a little bit here because the next thing I'm going to be looking for is my timing marks, which are on the uh, timing gear on the crank there. I'm going to just leave that set in that location right now. And we're going to turn our attention to our uh, lifters, which we're now going to lubricate liberally with some white grease here to get those lubed up and get those in their associated pockets in the case there. Get that one lubed up, drop him in. Get some lube on this lifter here. Drop that guy in. Get all four of them lubed up. The lifters are all in. While I have my lubrication in my hand, I'm going to put some grease on the cam bearings as well so that they're ready to accept the camshaft. Set that aside. Now, before we set our cam in there, uh, with our cam comes this uh, cam shield lubricant uh, that's a, a very uh, high anti-wear content uh, molly grease. It's packaged with your camshaft and what we're going to do is we're going to put that liberally on each of the lifter surfaces so that when the, we start the engine up our cam has instant lubrication. So we just uh, rip that open there. We're going to put a little dab on each on each lifter. There we go, we'll set that aside. And then we're ready to line up our cam. Now, on our camshaft, if you remember when we put the cam together, we talked about the timing mark. The timing mark is the single dot, which is right next to my finger here, lined up with our slot. That's our timing mark on our cam. Now that mark, that single dot, is going to go in between the two dots that are on the crank gear. So we want to position the cam in here, find the two marks on the crank, which you may have trouble seeing in your video because it's kind of dark and... and uh, a tough location to see and then we're going to rotate the crank if I can tangled up here a little bit rotate the crank down so that our marks stay in place and the cam sits in its bearings and we take one last visual check to make sure that our single dot on the camshaft is in between the two dots on the crank gear and now we know that our cam is in place and properly timed. <laughs>